So I'm John Sullivan, um, Campaigns Manager at the Free Software Foundation. Free software uh, refers to freedom rather than the price of the software. Software where the user is free to copy it. If you take a copy of Windows or some you know, typical off-the-shelf computer program and you make a copy of it, then you're doing something illegal. Free software is software where the people who write it say they want you to be able to copy it as much as you want. The difference there really has to be that uh, one is going to let you do and have control over your own information and privacy and the other one is going to you know lock you into a relationship that you don't want to be in. You have the freedom to run the software. Nobody should be able to tell you how you can run it on your computer. There's the freedom to study and modify the code that makes the program run. Just like you can take your car to any mechanic and get it fixed. If we lived in a world of fully free software, you could call anybody and have them make the program do what you wanted it to do. The freedom to share any modified versions that uh, you might make. What happens now is people aren't selling the software, they're selling you a license to the software. When you buy a copy of Windows, you don't actually own that. You buy a license to use that. They are then able, down the line like they've already done, to arbitrarily disable programs that are running on your computer. We sell software here ourselves, and we do it as a fundraiser. So you're paying because you want to, or because of a relationship or a service. You're not paying because you have to uh, get a license to use the software. Regular copyright um, is restrictive and tells you you can't make copies. You can't make something that is derivative of somebody else's work. We've taken that and turned it on its head and called it copy left to say we want you to be able to share this uh, and we want you to be able to modify it and make new things out of it. There's a variety of free software licenses but ours is called the GPL or GNU General Public License. Free software creates a different economy. Some of the good ideas are things like selling services associated with the software. They will help you, you know, tailor it or customize it the way that you want it. If it breaks, then they will come out and fix it. They'll keep you updated with the latest versions. Free software enables that business to happen on a much larger scale because right now only certain people are licensed and permitted to provide those services for the proprietary software programs. TRM, we uh, call it digital restrictions management. It's technology that restricts the way that you can use usually media files. Uh, people are probably most familiar with iTunes. You can only have the music on so many computers at one time. You can't copy it from here to here. If you try to copy it, you get an error that pops up. They want to get people used to the idea that it's fine for somebody to tell you that you can't copy this. That's backwards. We have technology now that makes sharing of information incredibly easy. We should be using it, not attempting to stop it. The main way that people get introduced to free software isn't because they read about it in the news, you know, that a, a government is switching to it. They, they get introduced to it because a, f a friend or a family member shows it to them. Then those people go and they, they work at companies and they, they lobby inside their company or just present the idea. So we have a, a, a place on the site called the Free Software Directory which is directory.fsf.org, and find all the free software programs that we know about now that so many people, whether they like it or not, are forced to interact with computers on a daily basis. Those freedoms are important to so many more people that we've uh, definitely wanted to be out in public and, and communicating with a much bigger audience than, than we used to.